Okay, I'm I'm back, guys. So, so as we solve a problem on uh, T beam, so let's try to solve now a problem in the double reinforced beam and try to compare the results later. As I told you, the the uh, purpose of uh, a a T beam on a positive bending is to add additional or to to provide additional compression uh, strength uh, so is true with the drb problem wherein we are providing additional compression strength by simply adding compression bars okay so basically the the material property and the uh, dimensions are the same of course uh, i just removed the the overhanging flanges at the left and the right because this is now a a normal rectangular beam but i provided an area of uh, compression reinforcement uh, equivalent to 1000 which is one half of the uh, regional uh, tensile uh, reinforcement area Uh, also, I I added uh, a a uh, a uh, height, an additional height of uh, 30 uh, millimeter, I think, was added just to compensate for uh, the uh, uh, For the uh, requirement of the covering but basically the depth if you will subtract 40 and uh, 80 430 I mean and 80 will yield to the same 350 a millimeter which is the same here okay so I, I really did not change uh, the dimensional properties I only changed uh, the covering that's why the the total height or depth became 430 okay uh, it's only a problem in the covering so uh, the reason for that is because I don't want the the dimensional properties to be different because we will be comparing the strength and the field requirement of the two uh, later Okay, to start now with the, the procedure, we solve for the depth of the stress block A um, by assuming okay, that both steel, and, uh, steel in tension and steel in compression have yielded. So C equals to T. Uh, basically, this is again uh, can be divided into uh, uh, two. Uh, areas like this on my first video i i i showed you that it can be divided into uh, two area the compression concrete here with the depth a and the as one and the other is the as prime okay uh given with the as2 okay uh, but in the computation i told you also that it's not necessary to divide it uh, you can actually make use of a C equals to T in general. The same is true with the with the uh, uh, T-beam analysis. But here, it's much simpler because we don't have any uh, so many parameters like BF, BW, etc. So we can easily uh, we can easily uh, uh, see where uh, the AS1 and the AS2 are situated. No? So this is simply your AS1 uh, FY plus AS2 FY. And uh, this is balanced by the, the uh, 
concrete in compression and this is balanced by the steel in compression okay so that's how you can see it so you, if you want to divide it it's okay but uh, you can readily see it here okay so we can now um, solve for the depth of the stress block simply on the basis of the assumption given that both steel have yielded to so this fy and that's fy but this is only as an assumption so we have to check it later so this becomes now uh, transpose it on the right negative as prime fy and then divide it by 0.85 fc prime b you get uh, a equals 117.647 okay so for your c you just get a over beta 1 you get 138.408 and of course the next step is to check if the steel yields in tension and in compression okay so uh, the formula for tension is 600 d minus c over c and the formula for compression is 600 c minus d double prime over c okay so take note of the 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 position of c there it's at the second it's a negative c here it's a positive c and a negative d double prime there okay so let's check the assumption now is this greater than fy yes so the assumption is correct is this greater than fy fy is 400 okay i didn't change the so this is not greater therefore wrong assumption so we cannot proceed because the assumption is wrong we go back to step one okay which is c equals t at this time instead of having an as prime f y so we plug in the formula of fs prime here okay but this is correct because that's correct so we don't change this one here so if we take a look at a a is beta 1 c there originally on our on our uh, uh, top equation here we use an a but here because we want to solve it on the basis of a quadratic equation in c we change a into a beta 1 c and solve using quadratic formula so i i didn't solve this using quadratic formula i have a math card tool so i just plug in the values so uh, this is a math card uh, uh, procedure no? so uh, you might be uh, confused so do not worry about this this is just just like any calculator i just assume a value 100 i it gives me a correct value 151 okay so that's how mathcad works so if you don't know mathcad you can solve it by using quadratic equation so i will not teach you how to do it because i assume i presume you know how to solve quadratic equations so c is 151.453 a is beta 1 c 128 so check again fs so this is greater than fy correct assumption and this is less than fy correct assumption so don't have a problem anymore so we proceed with mn1 and mm2 by using the formula again for the first uh, formula we have here your c we have here your t which is uh, uh, t1 as1 fy okay so this is 0.85 fc prime ab okay so that's a it's 0.85 f prime c so this is now your steel okay uh, t2 is as prime fs prime and this is t1 or sorry uh this is not t2 but rather this is uh, a c2 okay c2 that's c1 t2 equals 
a s 2 f y okay so the moment arm here is d minus a over 2 and the moment arm here is d minus d double prime okay so these are now your formula we get 125 times uh, multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 that 125 units is are in kilonewton meter kilonewton meter adding both mn1 mn2 multiplied by reduction factor phi so, so again this is for bending Okay, so this is for bending. So we now have 207.08. Okay, so for the ductility requirement, using again balance strain concept because we cannot use a raw BDR formula. Because this is only good for rectangular sections only. So we use the basis of a balance strain condition. That CB must, or, or sorry, sorry, Cmax must be less than CB always. And checking it, this is 210. Uh, Cmax is 113. So 113 less than CB, therefore the beam is ductile okay so uh, we now compare results uh, which is stronger okay so let's have here a comparison okay so we have here for your strength For your T beam and for your D double reinforced beam. So, what is the strength of the uh, double reinforced beam? This is 207.08. Okay. How about the strength of the uh, T beam? It's 208.694. How about ductility? So ductility, let's uh, look at Cmax. This is 113.874. And uh, Cmax is uh, for... one one nine point six seven six. And for cost comparison, which is costlier, okay, so I leave this part here for your um, Work. So I want you to look into this because your problem set I will be I may be asking you to qualify which which is more economical. Okay. So uh, ductility also. I want you to take note how it's compared but roughly class if you will look in general on the comparison of this 
So TBIM compares well with DRB. Meaning to say they don't really um, make any uh, big difference when it comes to strength ductility and maybe cost. No? So I don't know if uh, how would you qualify it uh, because uh, so again I have said I may be asking you the same question in your laboratory. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, we'll discuss some of your concerns later pertaining to my lectures today. So, thank you for listening.